Hey guys, welcome to this episode of Kung Fu Report. Chris, please come in. So in the last two episodes, we talked a little bit about big swings. For example, if Chris took a swing at me, this big swing here, right? You can come down this way. And some of you have asked, what would I do if someone did that to me? So if you guys swing hard like this, first of all, I don't think anything, anybody will attack like this nowadays, unless it's probably a bottle or something, because very few people do traditional arts like that, right? So if Chris, you have a bottle, you do it. If the guy comes in down like that, if you try to use like a tensile or something, it's not going to work, right? If he comes in hard, if you come in this way, he will break right through the structure. So a view cell is going to work a lot better. But actually, the easier way, I'll give you a technique from Shinji, it will look like this. This way. Right? To go slow, you come in here and you hit. I follow through here, but it's actually, actually going to the neck. And from here, you can hit back again, or you can use the shoulder and hit, right? And from here, I can launch a kick. Another way you can do it is, you can also pass the technique of the next. Okay, let's go slow for a second. His weight's going this way, and I hit the lever and I go for a punch. This kind of idea, of course, you see body and baji, also machine, right? So it's very versatile. When we get back, we'll talk a little bit more about this concept. Hey guys, I forgot to mention one thing. Chris, can you please come on in? Earlier, when Chris did that downward motion, and I did this kind of block and it came in and hit. Um, I just want to say one thing before I go. When you practice stuff like this, this upward block, it's not really a block actually. Because if you just stiffen up your arm and stop the guy, it will work if he's the same size as you. But if he's a lot stronger than you, like Chris is a lot stronger than me, he's like 100 pounds heavier than me. He is really strong and big. If he comes down like this and I just stick my arm out and then test up my arm, he's going to blow right through it because I just got my tricep here. So if Chris comes in hard like this, he can come in hard like this. One of the things that people do, see how it's collapsing, is they use the leg and line it up to the ground. And then also using this hand, you can go harder if you want. Okay. But as you get better, you don't even have to do that. Instead of using your legs to push off, and then borrowing your arm and using this hand, you can actually use your lower back. So if you have a crap in stance, it can come in hard. It doesn't matter. <laughs> so, later on, like uh, when I do the course, I'm going to go into detail how to develop that. It's actually from the first movement in compression work. Right? This is important because sometimes you don't have time to brace in the stance. So when the guy comes in, you just step in, you start hitting. Right? So, so, when you do this, try not to tense up your arm. Okay, second thing I want to say is the major concept today is not so much the two techniques I taught you, but a lot of times when people do this kind of motion, right, and styles that practice these kind of motion are experts at countering it. Likewise, if you do Pak Sao, Lap Sao, Bong Sao, Gan Sao, all the Wing Chun motion, Wing Chun people are experts at countering it. Same thing as boxing. If you're boxing, the best counter in the boxing are boxers. They don't know exactly how to counter boxing because they practice that a lot. So what I'm trying to say is a lot of time when you train, you're only allowed to attack each other with the same style which is good because it allows you to develop a high degree of specialization. But on the other side of it, it could be bad. At a certain stage of development, you should allow your training partner, communicating together when you work out, that he can attack you with anything he likes. A lot of times, Wing Chun people only are allowed to attack each other with Wing Chun. You go to boxing gym, you're only allowed to attack each other with boxing. You can't kick a guy in the groin, right? You do MMA, you're not allowed to suddenly pull a knife, right? If you're doing judo, you can't suddenly punch a guy in the face, you can kick out of the dojo, right? So these things are good because it allows you to specialize, keeps you safe, so it's good. But on the other side, at a certain point of development, maybe after black belt level or something, you should communicate with each other and you should start working on blending everything together so the other guy can kind of flow and attack you any way he likes. So eventually you see it all as anatomy and physics and not just limited to attacking each other with the same style. Anyways, enough of that. So, um, if you're interested, interested in this type of work, please go to adamchankungfu.com. We have Wing Chun courses level one to six, and also all the non-Wing Chun material that you see that I present all the time on YouTube. Okay, hope to see you there. See you next week.